Hi everyone. For the past year, Dom and I have been building a new studio down the back and I'm excited to finally share our progress so far. This video is part one in a series that I have planned to share with you. I will show you where I used to paint and where I'll be painting in the not too distant future. My studio has been 22 years in the making. We built this house back in 2000 when I used to work in acrylic paint. When we submitted the plans of the house to the local council, we also included a studio to be built somewhere down the back and we got approval to build it at the time. But this studio never got built. We had three young children and money was tight, so we put it on the back burner and I ended up painting in the garage for many years. These two rooms here, this one and the TV room behind me, were finished quite a few years after we moved into the house and I was able to move out of the garage and I pinched a little space over in the corner over there to paint in. I bought a drawing table that fit in there and for a few years that's where I painted. That was okay because I was a school teacher at the time and I only got to paint on weekends. Now we have moved the painting table out of there and I've got a small lounge in that spot. Fast forward a few more years and one by one our children started to leave home and Dom and I found ourselves alone in this great big house. He moved out first, then she moved out, and then the youngest moved out. After they all left, we had three spare bedrooms, so I decided to turn the smallest room into a painting room. And it was great when we first did it. I had a long table to paint at, Dom fixed up an old plan cabinet that I now store my paper in. There's a video about that on Dom's channel. I had covered space to put all my supplies in. Life was good. Until it wasn't. Around about the time that I moved into that room, I really started to focus on filming and making tutorials. And I found that all of the tripods and the lights that I used to film my tutorials took up way too much space. I started tripping over the tripod legs when I went in and out of the room and all of my art supplies started to accumulate. And pretty quickly things got out of hand. This is what the room looks like today. When I work in it all the time, I find that I'm really cramped particularly because of the tripods that I use when I'm filming and the way that I have to position myself in order to get the footage that I need when I'm painting. The table that I work at isn't big enough and even though I've got cupboard space, it's still a wardrobe so it's not really set up to store art materials in. There's my paints sitting on the floor and I've got paper stretched leaning against the cupboard. And over here on this painting cupboard, well, you can see that things are getting out of hand. So as you can see, I've well and truly outgrown this room. The other problem I have is because I work in the house, I find it really hard to switch off. I don't have a good work-life balance. I start work at 7 in the morning and you'll often find me still working at my desk over there at 8 or 9 o'clock at night. I'm at risk of burning out if I keep that up. Every time I make a YouTube video, I've got to get the lights out, get the tripod out, set it all up, do the filming and then put it all away again when I'm finished. And it's quickly become a chore. So... I knew in order for me to continue to do what I do and to grow my business, I needed somewhere where I could spread out, make a mess. And at the end of the day, I walk 
out of the workspace and I come back into the house here and I relax hopefully knowing me though I'll be back out there after dark just over a year ago we ordered a steel framed shed from a local shed supplier we chose a steel framed shed because it was the quickest and cheapest option for us much cheaper than trying to build something from scratch we live on 25 acres, so there's plenty of room for us to build a shed. We chose a spot down the back, right near another small shed that we have. It was far enough away from the house that it wouldn't disturb our views, but it was close enough so that it wouldn't be too much of a trek to get to it. It's also a spot where the sun shines on it every day, so we figured that the lighting would be good inside. We had a man who lives down the road come and excavate the site we'd chosen. We had to cut into the land because it's sloping slightly, so Dom's going to have to build a small retaining wall to support this area. Once the site was excavated, the people who made the shed dropped all the materials off for us. Then a plumber came and installed all of the plumbing for us. A few weeks later, the concreters came and they formed up the concrete slab for us. They came back the next day and poured the concrete. And there's the finished concrete slab ready for us to start building on. The people who built the shed were going to put it up for us, but we waited and waited for months for them to come and do it. We kept getting told that COVID was holding everything up. Months went by and I just got sick of waiting. So I talked Dom into putting it up ourselves. He's an ex-builder, so how hard can it be? One sunny Saturday we decided to start. We laid out some of the beams and channels and then we started bolting them together. And I have to say it was hard, slow work with just the two of us. We put the two ends up. Dom made sure they were plumb. And then we put up the middle support and also the middle support of the roof. Then it was time to start bolting on all the side channels. And then once we got the lower ones on, we realized we hadn't put the insulation paper up, so we had to take them back off, put the insulation paper up, and then put them back on. Not long after that, we started to screw the external walls on. This side here had a little window in it where the bathroom is, so that slowed us down for a bit while we got the window in. Don was pleased with what we had done so far. Windows. It's looking pretty good. Back wall. That was a big long run. It took a couple of days to do that. We did the back wall and the back wall had two windows in it. So that took us a weekend or maybe two weekends to get that in. And then of course we started along the front, which took us the longest because it had three windows and a big sliding door on it. There's the three windows in and now Dom's cutting the space for the sliding door. And this work took days and days and days. 
we worked on it just about every weekend and I lost count how many weekends in the end. We started to think that we should have waited for the shed builders to put it up. But we got there in the end. After we got the four external walls on, we started to put the roof on. The roof went on a bit quicker than the walls because we didn't have all the windows and the door to deal with. And you'll be pleased to know that there were no injuries to speak of, apart from Dom putting the drill through one of his fingers. So there it is, locked up. Once we got it locked up, we also attached a water tank to the back and that's now full of rainwater from the roof. Once we got it locked up, then Dom started to frame up the inside of it so that I could have a little bathroom, a cupboard that I could store all my lights in and a little kitchenette where I could make a cup of tea or something. So he dusted off his tools and he put his carpentry skills to good use. Here it is on the inside before Dom started to frame. And here's all his framing timber outside ready to be cut. This took quite a few weekends. He had to measure carefully and then cut and then piece it all together and then stand it up and attach it to the external walls. But he kept at it and eventually he got it all done. These are the internal walls going in where the bathroom and the little cupboard is where I'll be putting all my lights. Once all the frames went in, we called our electrician and he spent a day here putting all the wiring in. Once that was done, we put all of the insulation into the walls and the roof. That was a horrible, itchy and hot job that we were glad to finish. Here we've done some of the wall space, but we needed to get some more to finish off the walls and put it in the roof as well. Then the gyp rock could go up. That took us quite a while. I did what I could to help, but we had to get some plasterers here to help us put the roof sheets on. So, as I said, we did what we could ourselves and I helped him where I could. This is the little bathroom that he's shooting at the moment. Once all the gyp rock was up, the plasterer came to set all the joints. He could only work on Saturdays and we had the Easter weekend in there as well. So it took quite a few weeks to get all the setting done. So here the plasterer has set all the joints and he and Dom spent a day sanding all the joints as well. So now it's ready for some undercoat and some paint. We were exhausted at this stage, so Dom bought a spray gun and we ended up spraying the walls rather than painting them by hand, which saved us quite a bit of time. This is our first painting day. All the windows have been carefully taped up so that we don't get any paint on them. I've chosen the colour Cradle White for the walls, which is the same colour that we've used in the house. And you can see his little spray gun that he bought there as well. Before we could start painting, Dom had to drill out all the holes for the lights though. I'm going to put in some LED spotlights, which should give me good lighting while I'm painting. Okay, so we're ready to start painting now. This is the undercoat going on. Once that was done, we ended up giving it two coats of top coat. The plasterers told us that it was a good idea to use the roller after you've sprayed just to give it a nicer finish. 
so I went behind Dom with the roller and rolled over the wet paint gently. And this is the final coat going on now. It ended up using more paint than we expected, so we had to go and get some more. As I said, the spraying saved us a lot of time. We've also got the two internal doors to paint. So last weekend I gave them a coat of undercoat. We finished painting the walls last weekend. So now we have to finish off painting the two doors and the trims. I'll give you a quick look at what it looks like now. As you can see, we're going to have a lot of landscaping work to do as well. So this is how we left it this week. I thought it may have needed three top coats, but in the end, I think two is enough. And the ceiling's done. And here it is in relation to the house. It's not that far away, it's just a short walk. We're having some built-in cabinets made and also a little kitchenette, like I said. So this week the cabinet makers came to take their final measurements before they start building them. They said the cabinets should be ready in about four or five weeks. Once they're in, Dom's going to lay the floor. We'll get the electrician and the plumber back and then we can finish it off. So there you are. You're now up to date with our studio build. I will make a studio build part two video for you once we get those other things done. So stay tuned. I look forward to sharing it with you. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like and make sure you subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon with a new video. Hi everyone, for the... Hi everyone, hi everyone. My studio has been 22 years in the making. We built this house, this one, this, this one here, this one. months went by and I just got tired of waiting so I talked Dom Dom he sits over there that's why I'm pointing over there Dom he's not there at the moment but that's where he sits Dom. so that I could have a little bathroom a cupboard to store all my lights in and a little kitchenette that I could make a cup of tea at in on. A cupboard to store all my lights in and a little kitchenette that I could make a cup of coffee for I don't drink coffee. Tea.